Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. We have a new tutorial today. We're going to be working on our feet. So we are going to be showing you all the exercises that can be beneficial for you to work on your feet and to get better arches, but most importantly, that you will be able to use your feet in a better way. So is, these things affect uh, Andeor, it affects your pirouettes, it affects your jumps, it affects the look of your feet, of course. And that's why we have here with us uh, Sawa. So you get both versions from a girl's perspective and also from my perspective. And um, of course, she has been working a lot on these things and I trust that she knows the best exercises and she will be guiding us through this. So thank you, Sawa, for being here with us. Thank and you, uh, you can tell us a little bit about the feet and the work and what are we going to do today? Mm -hmm. So this exercise I, I learned is I learned while I was injured for, for my rehabilitation. And for, I think it's very beneficial for any dancers because since this is our root of the body and if, if you cannot um, keep your arches high of your feet, then it's more likely to have a not good alignment for, for the knee and the hip and then everything kind of affects from your feet. So, and of course, especially for the girls, for the point shoes, it's always good to have, uh, good to have strong feet. So, well, let's... I think it's just important to know that this video is for anyone. Even if you are a beginner or you are an adult doing ballet or you are a professional dancer doing ballet, this video is for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, fit is important for any dancer at any level. And I think we can follow, you can guys follow these exercises with no problem. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Yes. So first we will take our feet and let's try to have your fingers through your toes, like just like this, right? It, it is very important you are able to separate your every toes and yeah, some, have some space between, okay? Yes. And like this, you will make a circle, big circle with your ankle. Be careful to not move just your toes. This is more for your ankle. Make a big circle. Don't worry if this is very difficult for you because for example, it was really difficult for me as well. So if you, this is the first time you do it and you find it really difficult, don't worry, it will slowly get better. Yes. That probably mean, means that you have a lot of tension in the muscles that uh, are working in your feet for, in connection with the toes. Mm -hmm. Also, the other way around. So we can say around 10 circles yes. each way. Yes. We will be showing everything with the one feet because otherwise we will be here for two days. <laughs> but um, you can do this in, you have to do this in both sides, of course. Yes. Okay, good. Now that uh, you kind of warm up your ankle with the, the same, same arm with your leg, you will hold the high part of your arch, okay? And you want to kind of twist your foot, the bottom of your foot and the second part of your foot. Twist like when you want to cut the water from the towel. No? And twist and come back. Twist and come back. So this is why we are doing this is, so whenever you stand on your feet, you want to have some balance you know, you cannot stay in the same place all the time. If you, if you go on a little bit, there's, of course, there, there should be a point that you need to balance yourself with, with your feet. And if you don't have the mobility here, which we are trying to have the space now, then it's more likely that you, you are easy to twist your ankle because you have no space to balance yourself with your feet. So this is very important. And it's also very important we start with this exercise. So you, I, I believe that um, every exercise we do, I think we should have first to wake up 
where, where, where it's going to work and then train the muscle that we need. Because otherwise, when you don't have mobility and then you want only train the muscle, then probably it's going to just get stiff instead of you know, having good mo mobility and the strength together, because we need both mm -hmm. in ballet. So first, it's good that this is not a stress, it's a stretch, it's just a mobility, okay? And then a few times you do twist, twist. And now this, the third part is with this part of your hand, you will hold under the big bones of your ankle. We can leave our toes now, no? Yeah, now you can leave our toes. You will hold here under the bones like this. And then with the other hand, you will hold the whole heels. You know, there's a big, big bone in your heel. You will hold like this. And you should be able to kind of move this bone up, down. Mm -hmm. It's very a tiny movement, but this is also very important that you have this up and down and even a circle. It's very important that you will keep your foot very relaxed and you are only initiating the movement with the hand. Not that you are trying to move your foot, okay? Keep it very relaxed and let the hand guide your bones. I want to add that uh, normally when we are looking for exercises for your feet, they are all really based on only the stretching movement, mm -hmm. but there is not a lot of people sharing the 360 movement of the feet with this, which is something that we need. Sometimes to find control, you also need to find that mobility that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So this is very interesting, I think, for every ballet dancer that is watching this or any dancer that wants to improve their feet. So there is not only improvement in your arch, but there is improvement everywhere. Yeah, to all the positions. I swear to God, I, I tried many, many exercises for the feet, everything I see on the internet or, or whatever. And I've also tried all this exercise with the Theraband, which was not very helpful for me because, you know, all this movement that we do with, with some tension in it, for example, with the Theraband that I see many places, of course, show you will use your feet but then you also tend to use a lot with your accuracy, especially if you don't know where to, if, especially if you don't have so much awareness where to use your, your calf and the ankle and the feet. And you, you do this kind of exercise when you don't have so much uh, awareness in your body. And it's kind of, I would say it's a little bit dangerous because you might, you know, just do things from your ankle and they might, you know, you might end up the pain in your ankle or in your Achilles, or it could be also your calves. And if you get uh, very tight in your calf when you dance, or you tend to have cramps in your feet, which I used to have a lot, then probably you are not using it right way. Yeah. So this is also why we are doing these exercises. And you will see afterwards how you need to plant your feet and use your feet, stretch your feet afterwards. Okay, now that we kind of, you know, work on mobilities mm -hmm. on your feet, and I'm sure you, you feel your feet less swollen. Yeah. It's good and to, to feel the difference now between the feet that we have been working on and the second one. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, quite, quite a big difference in the feeling mm -hmm. already. So how should we move forward in this? Okay, the second part is, it's kind of the same. So. Now we are gonna stretch the calves. And there, there's a ligament of the muscle that, that are coming from the feet to the calf. And there's two of them crossing like this to, to, towards your calf. And if, you, if your feet are like this, if your feet are like this, then you tend to use one more than the others. So we would like to balance this tightness so. by stretching calf in a, in a right position. This is really important for all of you that have problems when you sickle the foot. There is a relation to, to this, what she's talking about. You probably are using your muscles more in one side than the other. That's why the feet tends to go mm -hmm. under them. So now, how are you going to sit 
before how, how you're going to stretch it is very important. So first you, you want to place your foot very straight. So this is uh, probably better if you have some mirror in front of you. So it's not where you feel it's straight, but where you actually see with your eyes, it is straight with your bones, okay? So first you wanna place your foot straight. So make sure this part from the heel to the toe, big toes are straight. Okay, I hope I'm, I'm straight to the mm -hmm. camera. And next, where you place your knee, is from the second toe, you, you want to have your shin straight up to your knee, just like this, okay? And then after, how you uh, place your hip is also very important because it also affects your knee, where knee placement, okay? So you make sure this is straight to your up to your knee, and now you want to place your hip just behind it, behind your knee, okay? So if you are sitting like this, your, your knee is looking inside, or if you're sitting like this, you, your knee would look outside. So you want the knee facing straight forward on top of your second toes, okay? And from here, you want to press your knee forward where you place your knee, probably for me, because I have a lot of mobility, for me it would help if I lean, lean on my leg with my body. And if you feel straight just with your hand press, pressing, then that's also okay. Mm -hmm. And now you would feel the stretch in your calf, I believe. And just hold like five, seven seconds and come back. Not too long because we, we don't want those ligaments to be floppy. Just to uh, stretch a little bit, like loosen the tightness where, where it's tight. And where you feel stretch, I guess it's depending on the person because one might feel other tight and some people feel, you know, opposite. For me, I feel quite in the middle mm -hmm. of my calf right now. I feel it more low, low calf than high calf, for example. For yeah, me. so this, this is really depending on the people. And yeah. you just do not too long, five seconds, and come back. You can repeat a few times, two or three times, and that's it. Good. It's, it's very important you don't stretch too much because when, when you stretch a ligament too much, then it, it's uh, harder to activate afterwards. This is just to release weight tight, to have the balance between two, ligament, the two ligaments. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't, don't do it too much. And next, now that we, you, I, I'm sure you feel your foot more balanced than before, or not. <laughs> and now we're going to move uh, to activate some muscles that are very important. Okay, so I would like for you to find some wall, so something that you can lean on. And we're going to place our foot a little bit far. From, it's better that if you don't have anything like this, but right now we have only this, so I'm going to show which this. So probably I'm going to place something, uh, press my foot a little bit far from the object, okay? And now I'm going to lean towards the object like this, for example, better the wall. And you want to have the weight on your outside of your foot, just like this. So. When you see from the front that your, my ankles are still straight compared to the leg. So you don't want to have your foot like this or too much like banana, like this. So try to place all the, all the side of outside of your foot and have the knee uh, fixed to the wall, okay? And now uh, what we like to work on is that you want to, from here, there's a bone here in the highest part of the arch. There's a bone, okay? And without moving this bone, which is like whole ankle, without moving this ankle, you, you want to press this, uh, the end of your big toe here, towards the floor like this, and come back. So what we are working on here is to have the high, high arch 
by activating your foot and pressing this part to the floor. And yeah, just, just simple as that. And probably if you, if you are not used to this movement, you might find it very difficult to just push this part without moving the ankle like this. So be very careful that you are not doing it from your ankle, but you are doing just by big toes. Some, sometimes micro movements are better than big movements. Yes. So if you cannot go straight uh, all the way down, just no, on you, that mind you, control is, you is shouldn't, better. You shouldn't touch the floor at all. It's just for you to push, push it. And probably uh, it helps for some people to lift the toe up so you feel this part pushing down, okay? Like this. So better to not think this way, like you would stretch your toes, because you want to actually press this part, not your toes. So maybe first it feels, it feels easier to feel it if you lift your toes up and push this part down. And how many repetitions of this? Mm, I don't know, I would say 10, 10 times, two to three times, set, two, three sets. Two, three sets, uh, 10 repetitions, it will be good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, until you, you, you feel it, because it's very important. Okay, so let's do. First, foot a little bit far, and then to the object, make sure your ankles are aligned, and then now you're gonna push one. And up, and two, and up, and three, and up. If you want, you can hold your ankle, or you can press your toes so you know where to push. And up, down, and up, down, and up, down, and up. That's it. Okay? Yes. So, next exercise is so we would like to feel this feeling but without the wall so now you will place your foot in front of you just like this and make sure your knee is on top of your uh, second toe just like we did before and now we're gonna lift the foot up and now we're gonna push the same part that we just did so from the toes so there's a big arch and now we're gonna place the toes onto the floor. We press the floor and flick it outside. And be very careful that when you flick, that you don't lift this part and flick. You want to keep pressing where you pressed at the beginning until the end you flick it. Good. And down, toes, and flick outside down, toes, and flick outside, down, toes, and flick outside. So why we are doing this is that the, uh, we want to have the good balance between in your ankle. So some are going more out, some are going more in with, uh, you know, the arch completely uh, how you say collapse? <laughs> Collapse. Mm -hmm. Collapse. So to have the very high arch and very, you know, straight ankle, you would like to have good balance between the outside muscle that are going through your shin and then inside muscle that are coming from the foot to your calf. So this is to make this outside muscle activate. And probably you will feel this easier than inside. Well, depending on the people, I guess. So we can try also inside? Yes. And now you, you repeat a few times outside, and now we're going to do the same towards inside. So first is the same, first the big toes, and the rest of the toes. And by pressing it, it's, it's like you want to dig the floor and inside. For example, I've twisted this ankle, this side of my ankle. So for me, it's really hard to put it inside since my ankle tends to have tension here because I twist it this way. And if you feel very difficult to put your feet inside, probably you have a lot of tension next to your shins, you know, this muscle. 
So if you feel like it doesn't go anywhere, probably massage this part first, okay? Where probably you might feel very much pain. Not too much, just a little bit, and then try again and see if you have more space to go inside. It's very important you it goes under your knee, goes out and in the same amount. So you have the good balance. If you feel like it goes out, but then it doesn't go in, or it goes in, but it doesn't go out, probably you want to work on it more on that side that it, does, it feels difficult for you to move. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's it? I uh, think... Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> the, the, it's like a, another exercise is the same thing, but then you, you will do the same, same movement I mean, probably same feeling, activation, by sitting back. So there's no weight on your foot right now. And you, you would like to push down. And now without actually flicking it, you want to press outside or inside. But this time, actually move, without actually moving your foot, you just press toes down and you push out or Press toes down and in. So this is already very much similar to what, uh, what you're going to actually use when you stand and do your bar, uh, you know, hold your standing leg. So if, you, if your toes are going up like this while you dance, probably you are not using your feet right or either your weights are not in, your, in the right place. So. You want to have this feeling of pulling up the arch and always grabbing the floor and be able to balance yourself out and in is the key to the strong foot, I guess. Well, this is a, what I feel like uh, most beneficial for my feet out of many exercises that I did. Mm -hmm. And I hope it will help you too. Yes, just for me to say, uh... You don't need to do this every day. Of course, you can if you want to, but I, I think that doing this uh, workout itself, like three, four times a week, is also really good. Or whenever you will do ballet class, if you don't do ballet class every day, you can do it. And you can also pick up the exercises that are more difficult for you and do them every day. And the others, you can do it three, mm -hmm. four times a week. Uh, it's really not about how many repetitions you do of each, but that you start to control with your mind the muscles in your feet and that can help you after when you dance. This is in the long uh, run, of course, this is not like I need to feel everything today, but if you keep doing this consistently, you will feel like your feet gets better mobility, it will look nicer and you will be able to use them, which is the purpose of all of this. So I thank you a lot, Sawa, for sharing this with all of us. And uh, I hope you got a lot of value from this and that you will all improve your feet. Mm-hmm.